All right, so I've been using Arch and KDE for quite a while, and I could say, you know, setting it up was a roller coaster, but I'll get into that later. But, you know, it's been a pleasant experience, actually. I could say it's better than Windows in some ways. Uh, there are a little bit, uh, there are some caveats that I'll get into right now. Uh, now I'm still using VS Code, so I didn't switch because NeoVim or whatever. I was just sick and tired of Windows spyware and everything. So, uh, all right, down here, this is the bottom panel. This is a default panel. And right here you have the uh, desktop switcher. Uh, I can remove virtual desktop from here. And these are all the icons that are pinned down here. And OBS Studio Recording, Content, What C, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Clipboard. Now I'm using a custom icon pack that doesn't come with KDE by default. You open up the application launcher. Uh, this is what it looks like. You have places and there's no, and the best part is that there's no Bing. So if I, I don't know, search for uh, what you saw right now was KRunner. I'll definitely, uh, I'll demonstrate that right now, but you have like results from like software center and everything. And now we hit alt space get this k runner now it's a search utility that's similar to power toys run if you're on windows or spotlight if you're on mac os and if i put in question mark you get all of the search operators such as places you can search for like places you can spell i will type in if i spell i don't know blurp no dictionary found okay so we don't have a spell checker installed but we can define words such as blur I mean, this takes quite a while, but there it is. And you get all kinds of definition and you can uh, copy whatever definition you like. So if I take this, for example, and then I open up and I go back here and then type in K right, which is uh, similar to a, a simple text editor. That's uh, pretty similar to notepad. I click on new file, paste right here, bingo. I can also search uh, uh, Google from here. So G and then colon. And then, I don't know, install EVM on Arch Linux. And this is what you get right here. You can uh, click and it will open up a Google search and whatever default browser. In my case, it's uh, Brave. Now, if we go to open up system settings, uh, I have a custom keyboard shortcut, which is Windows and I. Uh, that is uh, similar to the one on Windows. You have a ton of different options like this is where you'll spend the bulk of your time in you can change things like the wallpaper and the global theme but here you can change how the window looks and behaves like every single thing about it like you can change these buttons you can you also have like breeze uh themes so uh, light dark and then twilight which is a mix of uh dark and light similar to Windows 10 and then you have oxygen which if you preview it is just like the classic um like oxygen theme I guess so I apply this yeah you have the this old I mean this is like considered old but honestly it looks way ahead of its time I mean just like Windows I guess they just took a step back with like you know skeuomorphic design yeah this is what the theme looks like it's like glossy you know it reminds me of uh you know android uh the hollow hollow theme uh you know from like ice cream sandwich and honeycomb let's go back to breeze dark and my icons are now gone which luckily we can also change because if we go to colors and themes and go to icons i can choose papyrus papyrus i'm sorry if i butchered that i don't know how to pronounce it but i can also change the icons uh on windows uh, can also change uh, sorry on an arch you can also change uh you know the login screen uh now that it now this one uses ssddm under the hood which is a simple desktop simple desktop display manager so basically this this is like the login screen that you get uh with like kde and also lxqt as well oh okay this is a login screen okay i'm sorry I'm sorry about the confusion, but this is this is just a splash screen that that's that comes after uh, you log in. So you have some stuff like Maldives. Oh, you have Maya, and then this is the one from like uh, like Oxygen. You know, you also can customize decorations. Seven Arrow. This is from like a theme that I tried before, and I just realized you can actually double click on whatever theme or setting you want without like having to click here then apply i click here 
get breeze light. What oh, this is actually pretty useful. So instead of having to, I don't know, like apply on everything. Now, if you go to power management, these are like you can basically switch profiles whenever you plug in. This isn't something you can do with Windows, but you know, I have like a, a widget down here called uh Plasma Vantage, which is like the Lenovo Vantage uh, application on Windows. So you have things like enabling touchpad, the super key, battery fast charge mode. Oh, and I, and I also like made it so that you can like, it auto hides when you like, um, you know, when you hover over it, it shows. But if I right click and then show panel configuration, there are also like more uh, settings. So you can only uh, show when a Windows maximize, so dodge windows exit mode right here and it'll only show on like one screen i have like a, a external monitor that it's connected to but basically if you like open up a window maximize it the the task manager is gone or the taskbar if you will so um i mean honestly i don't have a lot to show here it's just a pretty simple kde setup now as far as applications go uh you have like spectacle which is like the snipping tool on windows so if i open it up uh, you can choose a you know all different uh configurations you have a uh, rectangle rectangular region which has a keyboard shortcut so meta shift uh print Where's the print key? Oh, this is embarrassing. I'm looking for the print key. Okay. So let's click on it. And there you have like take screenshot and like take a screenshot of the entire desktop. So if you hit enter, I'll just bring it over here. Okay. So it takes a screenshot of your entire desktop. You have two monitors, right, but let's try taking a rectangular shot. You can also move, move it around before like saving it or copying it. For example, you can also like resize and use like the arrow keys for that, which I honestly didn't know. So yeah, I'm still exploring, still learning a lot of stuff about Arch Linux and KDE. So yeah, I just have VS Code installed Spotify, which I didn't expect there would be a desktop uh, client of, which is really interesting. And I also found uh, a Notion desktop client, which, you know, works pretty, works pretty well, almost exactly similar to like Windows or Mac OS. Although this is like an unofficial one, but it because I don't need it in the background. Now, let me show you my uh, fast fetch right here. I mean, again, terminal, there's nothing, just a basic um, uh, console terminal. I mean, there's no fancy CLI. Only The only CLI I use, only, um, the only style I use is like uh, Starship, which was uh, a program or a CLI shell that's written in Rust. So here is my fast fetch right here. You have everything OS, host. So yeah, I'm just using basic Arch Linux, not Manjaro or anything. I have CPU and then my discrete and the integrated GPU, RAM usage, and then swap and hard disk space or SSD battery. Now, speaking of battery, uh, if you click here, uh, if I change, uh, you know, any of the power profiles, the, the red dot or thing on like the power button on a Legion laptop, uh, because I have a Legion 5 Pro will change accordingly. So right now it's white because it's balanced, power save, or quiet mode actually. Uh, that's what it's called, it's now blue. Let's go back to performance because uh, I'm already plugged into like a charger with conservation mode, so. That's how I set it in the settings. So I go back to power management. Uh, it'll switch to power profile according to, you know, whether or not it's charging or like batteries low. You also change the brightness automatically. Uh, I believe that, you know, you can do the do these things on Windows. It's just they're buried deep in like Windows settings or whatever. But here, everything's just in one place. You don't have to like open up control panel or or like or window settings depending on what you want to access so uh let's talk about uh other shortcuts here so uh for the emoji selector it's uh windows dot the meta key is the windows and right here you can search whatever emojis so i don't know laugh totem i guess i don't know the statue thing yes this one moai okay now you can also uh access uh uh you know characters with the win and then uh, back tick and for, for example if you want to hit like an accent o you can also do that then to clipboard paste it right here same thing with emojis i really hate that you like have to like copy and paste manually instead of like 
inputting in whatever text box it's focused on, which, you know, I understand it's not like a pop-up window or anything or a dialogue. You know, it's just a separate window, separate application background process thing. Now, KRunner, it's alt space as you saw, but uh, now you can uh, download plugins, but I ran into a few issues such as, you know, install bash script, not uh, refusing to run or or any errors like that, like CMake or whatever. CMake not uh, installing, I mean, I mean, it would have been better because they're like uh, VS Code and Spotify plugins that I wanted to try here. One more thing I wanna show you is something called KDE Connect. Uh, if you're coming for Windows, this is like the Your Phone application. But right here, it's, um, I mean, it, it's good. Uh, the only thing I can't do, unfortunately, is, uh, I didn't wanna, yes. I couldn't access the, uh, let me just open up. Okay, I couldn't access the file system. It says fail to start SSFH and maybe it's a skill issue. I don't know how to use it properly, but uh, you know, I just couldn't get it to work. But one thing I was able to do was, you know, transfer a file from my phone to the desktop. So um, let me show you what happens if I try to, uh, I, I haven't tried presenter yet, but uh, if I click here, you know, you can clear notifications and they're not on my phone anymore. You can also access SMS messages. You can see here. <laughs> also ring it. Okay. Ringing right now, but if I click found it, ringing stops. If you look at the notification drawer on your phone. But actually, let's try uh, transferring files. So I believe to do this, uh, let's see here. I want to transfer a or I don't know, could send myself the resume. Click on share, send to device. Okay, there it is. Select it, click send. The problem with that is that it's not very reliable. You know, sometimes it could, you know, fail or whatever. I had this issue and I guess the workaround for this is to keep the KDE Connect app like open, not just running in the background. So let's try this again. Yeah, still failed. Okay, let's actually try sending a photo okay this is slightly embarrassing so yeah this is my simple arch kde setup um so let's talk about the the, the bad stuff so setting it up was not easy i mean there was a script called arch install which uh as you know just sets up or installs uh uh it's just it's a cli pro or a EUI terminal interface that, you know, lets you select packages and, you know, different configuration settings without having to type in a lot of commands manually. And, you know, it did save me a lot of time, but, you know, uh, initially when I tried setting it up with Hyperland, I just didn't know how to use it. So I had to like, you know, get rid of that and just uh, use KDE instead because of its customizability. It's really neat and super easy. Uh, although the closest thing, uh, I could get to Windows was obviously Cinnamon. And that was incredible. It was it was awesome. Um, you know, you can just customize it the same way you could with like KDE. I mean that that's how I got started with uh, Linux uh, in 2021 when I was still in college. Now one of the things uh, issues I ran into was like connecting to Wi-Fi from a from like a terminal. Uh, I mean, it was a skill issue on my part, but I was able to get it working eventually. VS Code, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's a RAM hog and it uses up a lot of memory. It's written in Electron, so well, Linux is awesome. You know, I don't have a, anything bad to say about it. The terminal, everything, you know, everything you do is in the terminal, which is fine for me. I mean, I'm a full stack web developer, I guess. So I'm kind of used to, you know, the terminal and everything. But uh, you install packages using this utility called Yay, uh, which obviously doesn't come with Arch by default. Uh, it's actually Pac-Man, but um, Yay is basically sort of like a CLI tool that you can use to install packages from the Arch user repository. Now, if you look at the homepage for the Arch user repository, it's basically a, a uh, like um, a huge collection of community maintained uh, packages. So these are stuff by the Arch community. Some of them are like official and oh, I just noticed there's a PowerShell, but here you can install a lot of stuff like Python, for example. You can also install like Node.js from here, although, or actually not, that's, I don't think, well, you can install like uh, NVM and other, Arch is 
pretty awesome. I think it's better in Debian in that regard or Ubuntu or whatever. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to uh, give this a huge th thumbs up. Subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my content. And see you next time.